Good morning, IME 100 Labs. Welcome to week six, May 11. Um, we're here in the Engineering Materials Lab. Uh, Mr. Richardson, what are we doing here today? Tensile testing. You have no idea? I have no idea. Oh, so what do you call a blind ear? I don't know. You don't? That you, I have no idea. Yeah. All right, so today, we're going to hear, be here at the UTS tensile testing machine. Um, we've got some 3D printed dog bones, um, which actually match our uh, injection molded dog bone. And we have some other types of tensile test samples that you can use. Um, we have a solid round steel. We have a flat steel bar. We have a smaller plastic. Um, you can get the same results um, from the different sizes. Uh, you just need to know the cross-sectional area. So today, we're going to use our U2S machine and break uh, one of these 3D printed dog bones. So we're going to go to ASTM 102, which is the spec number D638, tensile test of properties. We're going to click on the OK button. We're going to put a couple dimensions in here. The width of 0.5, thickness of uh, eighth of an inch. And then we're going to go to tensile testing of the specimen. Um, <clears throat> we're going to do the one that was printed in the X direction. Um, but it's not quite going to fit in our jaws, so we need to go to the jog position in our machine here, and then we're going to, oops, there we go, pass the drop test. We're going to jog this down so we can grab it with the top and the bottom jaws. That looks pretty good right there. And once we're done with that, we need to go out of the jog mode. And then we're going to load the top part of the sample first. And you know if it's open is that way, so we'll go the opposite direction and tighten this down to grab the sample. And then we'll do the bottom one. Oh, okay. So why do we do the top one first? That's a great question. Um, we do the top jaw first so it doesn't do a preload. Oh, another question. Okay, our load cell. We have a thousand pound load cell, um, which should match our material. Um, if doing a steel sample, we would probably want to bump up to the 10,000 pound load cell. Um, now, once the sample is in there, we just do a couple of clicks. We're going to click on test, and we're ready to go to the specimen, so we're going to push the letter T, and we're going to test it to failure. I'm glad to see everybody has their safety glasses on. And we're up to a load of 300, 350, 400, and there we go. Our sample broke, so we're going to remove this from the tensile machine, and that's what our failure looks like. So when we do a tensile sample, we'll have uh, typically either a ductal or a brittle fracture, and because this has a little bit of a, it's not a straight across flat, I would call this a, a ductal failure because um, we would also check in the data to see if we had much elongation. Um, and one of the things they would do with that is uh, we didn't put the extensometer on the, on the sample, but our extensometer would go on the sample like this. 
then that would give us uh, elongation. So that's it for our tensile testing sample. Um, and I believe the professor has more information on this that he'll give you in lecture if he already hasn't. Um, remember, have a great day. It's good to see you're all doing fun with the, having fun with the robotics and your personal home projects. And as always, keep your stick on the ice.